two is where we start to hit some adversity, right? So we get another win in our fifth game. Uh, I think that's against DC. Um, but I believe in that game, that's where Alonzo gets injured for his season and ending injury. Right. And in this game, this, the new starters are Almato, of course, is now ready. He wasn't ready at the beginning yeah. of the season. Jake Mulraney starts. Did you know that? Oh, he wow. starts in that game, and Moreno starts in that game. Mm. So the front line is completely changed. And now Hernandez is gone, and Lennon is back to right back, right? Um, Campbell's in for Robinson, although Robinson was red carded in the previous game, so that was a forced change. Yeah. But you've already, you know, some of these changes are not forced. Yeah. Right? And, right. and Sadich is now gone. Right, for one game, although he comes back. So yeah. keep going. No, and in, in that DC United game, that was the last we saw of Joseph Martinez for the next eight weeks because he went in for his procedure um, after the DC United win. Right. So we lost Alonzo, lost Martinez for eight weeks. Um, so Alonzo was gone in the fifth game, right? And yeah. then Martinez is gone by the eighth game. No, right? Martinez is gone in, after the fifth game as well. Oh, okay. Okay, so, so all right, so we did have those sort of two injuries at once, but I think if anybody had told you, if you told me that Alonzo was going to be the key to the start, no. I would say no, because I would have said Sosa is the key to starting it, whatever. Yeah. And to be honest, Alonzo goes out in the fifth game, and it's the seventh game that Sosa starts, right? Yeah. So there's only one game in between that we were so lost without, right. you know, <laughs> without <laughs> Alonzo or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, and there's only now one game for one game without Martinez. They were like, what are we going to do? Right. And they played Dwyer as the starter before Cisneros takes over. Yeah. Right. So one of the things you'll notice is that when they're the big injuries, the replacements coming very quickly. Yeah. Only one game in between. Well, the eighth game here, Guzan goes down for the season as right. well. So right. Alonzo Martinez in the fi after the fifth game are out. Uh, and then Guzan in the uh, the seventh here, or af after the eighth. Yeah, so Sadich comes back. Moreno is now starting every game. Almada is there, but Dwyer goes to the bench. Cisneros comes in. No, you know, Lennon's to the right back. Hernandez is out. Wiley comes in as a left midfielder, yeah. right? I mean, this is, a, you know, a lot, a lot of changes. And you're like, um, you know, he's claiming they're all forced, but they're not, right? Moreno was yeah. available that whole time before he started starting every game. He could have been in there. Yeah. Um, and Sadich has now come back, and you're like, how many games is Sadich going to start? Yeah. <laughs> so then we then we go to the, the next set of four games here. Yeah, so that, that game, the first replacement, when Guzan goes out, we don't have any replacement, right? So right. Shuttleworth goes right yeah. in. He's, he was our and backup. He's just not good. And that that, that was obviously a, a big blow at, at goalkeeper, right? We had Rios Novos at that point. We did not have Goudinho <clears throat> um, hired yet. They went out immediately looking for him right. um, and took a little bit of time. I don't know. So Shuttleworth plays five games in a row. Right. Um, yeah. Rios Novo was available right after that. You know, he immediately came in the backup. But Godinho was, I think, available there. It was weeks per, before Godinho was there before oh, it was put it was in like, the... It was four or five, maybe six games before we ever, ever got to see him. At least. Maybe even longer. Yeah, at least six. Yeah. And I, now, you know, if you look at the lineup, Josetu is now still starting every game. Cisneros is in the, every game. Dwyer is nowhere to be seen anymore. Yeah. Moreno is now starting every game. And suddenly Ibarra shows up. Araujo yeah. is back healthy, so he's coming there. So it's Almada, right? Um, and Lennon is still at the right back. I yeah. think at this point Hernandez was actually injured. Yeah. But, um, you know, George Campbell... Who was the starter? He's available for this whole thing, right? But it was started out with Campbell, and now it's Franco and Robinson. That's a change that wasn't forced. You yep. know, Campbell was there the whole time. So, so yeah, Miles then goes out for the season. I think in the <clears throat> the the second game of this this uh, set of games here that we're mm -hmm. looking at on the slide. Um, obviously, that's a huge loss. Um. You know, and at this point, you know, you are feeling a little empathy for for Pineda diversity for sure. Um, but we're seeing the emergence of Cisneros, which did look really good here at the moment because I think he had like a hat trick. Um, Cisneros four goals in six games, right? Yeah. 
But he only scored in two of those six games. One was a hat trick. Had a phenomenal, mm-hmm. good good run in that game, right? And so, one great game. One great. <laughs> basically, that that's the insight here. Is that's it? It's yeah. it's an outlier, right? And it's an outlier that Pineda rides to the end of the season. Is a bit of the Eros Campoyo here. Uh, that's that's coming as we watch this compile, right? And so. Look, we've lost our goalkeeper. We've lost Alonzo. We lost Miles, right? Like, there's some shit in the back that needs to be sorted out. I, I, I hear you. But the rest of the team, Dave, is, is relatively intact. There's yeah, Nick, and Sadich has suddenly and, disappeared, and now it's Josetu and Ibarra yeah. who are the, you know, the king and the queen right. of the midfield, right? Yeah. Um, why, right? If Sadich was so good, why did he go to the bench? And then if if if... He should have gone to the bench, and those guys were so good. Why does Sadich reappear again? Yeah, <laughs> right as the season goes on. What? Why? What? What's going on now? You have Jose and Ibarra for all these games, and it was a little bit consistent through that period. But if you notice, for all of his, you know, outside back, blah 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 blah. You know, at the end of this game, um, you know, what game are we in the season here? Right, we're in like. This is the third page, right? Yeah. So this is the 12th, 9, 10, 11, 12th, right? So the 12th game, and it's still Lennon and Goodman on the outside, right? So all yeah. of his like, oh, we had the outside backs, you know, because everybody was hurt, right? During this time where we had some adversity, we still got, you know, Lennon and Goodman, right? It's not like we yeah. had, you know, the other guys. So keep yeah. going. So, yeah, we go into the next stretch of games. Um, sis. Cisneros is goalless after another three starts. So he's uh, obviously plugged in because we don't have a striker without Joseph. He's still coming back. But Joseph returns finally somewhere during this stretch, um, returns eight weeks later. So, um, you know, and then he starts two of the next three games and gets one goal, which, hey, you know, from coming back from a procedure, you know, Maybe, yeah, so maybe. 13, he's back, right? So yep. he, so game 13, he was back. He was out for f- at game five, right? Yeah. So he wasn't really gone that long, right? Um, yep. And during that time when he first went out, Araujo was gone, but then Araujo was back, right? Yep. So, you know, and Almada wasn't there at the very beginning. So even when Martinez went out and it was so devastating, whatever, right? You still had Araujo, Moreno, Almada. You had three of Mama, right? That should be enough to score goals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Designated players, for the most part, you had them to pick from throughout the season. Right. Um, and in game 13, Sadich is back again. Abara, yeah. you know, on the bench, right? And and when does Almada emerge on the scene? Amada was in there from like the fifth game. Okay, because he um, had like a suspension, right, for red or something. No, he, no, it was the transfer. Else? It was oh, okay. the yeah. transfer. It was going through, and he had Got to go it. back to get like you yeah, know, it, you know, hard it. sort. He, he actually had to be be a legal employee yeah. before he could even Got do it. the paperwork. So once they finally decided to employ him, he had to fly back to Argentina, do all the stuff. So there was a you know. Got it. Four game kind of delay there that was happening. All right. So in game 13, we're now stuck with um, Wiley and McFadden. 13, 14, those are the outside box, those games. Um, 15, um, 16, they're still there, right? Yep. But in game 16, Parada makes the first start, right? So again, what, you know, you're talking about, we yes, we had injuries, right? But typically the club within two or three games found the replacement. Yeah. Right. And they were there, right? Goudinho was was there pretty quick. Yeah, Goudinho was there. So Rios Novo is still starting all of these games. So Rios Novo is starting all these games um, through 16, 13, 14, 15, and 16. But um, we should see. And we won't recap the statistics on... Rios Nova is being too short to be a professional goalkeeper. But if Pineda is a data-driven coach, then he should have known that he should have given Goudinho a chance, especially since you've seen him tinkering so much. Didn't give Goudinho a chance. Okay, so I will, I'll have to say, so we can see on the substitute bench that Goudinho shows up at game 13. He's on the substitute yeah. bench at game 13, people, yeah. oh, right? So game 12, I think, is when Rios Novo first starts. Is yep, that true? that sounds right. Uh, let me just double check yeah, that. Yeah, because I was like, uh, 
Yeah, I remember. Ex- no, it's, it's. I almost expected to see Gudino from like the minute he was in the locker room. Right, exactly. Show, show up on the field. So Rios Novo actually played one, two, three. He played four games until Gudino shows up okay. on the on the bench. Yeah, right? I remember it was a little little lag there. Yeah. So there was a little bit of a lag, but not much. Again. You know, the club club showing that they were really responsive. The fourth game yeah. is when Godinho starts on the and by, bench. And by responsive, who do we mean? Like, that's actually Boca and uh, what's what's the other recruiter, the scout? Um, uh, U.S. men's national yeah, team know. player. Oh, you're talking about... Um, who everybody wants fired right now as well. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan Spector. Jonathan Spector, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, but Rios Novos plays 13, 14, 15, 16, right? These are all games when Godinho is there. And he continues to play 17, 18, 19, 20. He's still starting, right? And just to give you a sense of, of where we're at, let me keep going for a second. So 20, uh, let's see. And then 21, is where Gudinho starts, right? So Gudinho shows up at match 13 and doesn't start until 21, right? So we're talking about seven matches. He stuck with Rios Novo, right? When he had Gudinho obviously ready to go, was sitting yeah. on the bench. Ready to go. Um, so what, what set of games is this that we're starting with here? What page are we on? I think we're on 17. Is this this 17, is starts with the 17th 20, game here? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so Joseph comes back, has Joseph one goal in the next two starts, but he's dropped for Cisneros, who scores a brace. And in this stretch right here, it's actually the last time you'll see Cisneros as a pure striker. You'll see him start forward for a huge stretch here uh, of the season, but this is the last time he got to, to be up front. So. It's a combination of Martinez and I think Dom Dwyer. That yeah. So you skipped starts. ahead a little bit because you skipped okay. you skipped one. I was just a little, that's why I was a little bit confused while I was following you, right? Okay. Because Joseph Martinez is there, and then Cisneros shows up. Um, yeah, I think that's um, go back eighteen, one right? Match eighteen. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, Dave. You got me confused now. Yeah, it's I my, shouldn't it's have my skipped pres- ahead. It's, for it's you, my presentation, right? but uh, you know, at, at this this point, right? I, I just looking at the way that things flowed. To me, it was it was clear since Joseph has come back, he's had you know some success in in the games he's had, scoring some goals. Um, Cisneros uh, had had this brace, right? Which again was like a canary in the coal mine kind of moment of. Uh, and it's probably the wrong terminology, but it, it gave hope that he could still get it done. And so I feel like Pineda just lost trust in Joseph at this point in the season um, and, and decided in his head to run with Cisneros as somebody who is going to be a consistent player on the field that was going to be able to get goals. I don't know. Do you agree with that, Dave, or? Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree. <laughs> so, like. so then we go forward here and... Um, Cisneros has five starts after that, th- that set of game, including the next one, next game on the next slide. Right. And, uh, and one goal out of all five of those starts. Right. Uh, as he was at a, as a right forward, I think most of that time, uh, Joseph got three starts and one goal, um, in the, in Joseph's goal was in the next, uh, next slide. But, you know, none of this was really building confidence, right. In Joseph to, get back with any sort of consistency uh, coming off like a procedure. I mean, I feel like, again, this is where when you look at the slides here and you look at the lineups, Pinade is constantly tinkering with, you've got Joseph back. Like you've had him back at this point for, for weeks. Um, and you're not setting the players up around him in a consistent way so that he can just build the confidence engine. That is Joseph Martinez, at least give him this season to prove himself and, you know, meanwhile, you know, he's putting his trust in Cisneros, right? And you're seeing a fade of trust in Moreno in this stretch of the season, too. So you're starting to see still just blindly trust in Cisneros, um, who's playing a you know, duplicate position for Moreno in my position, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, 
And so why not? Why is Moreno not on the field more consistently here versus Cisneros, in my opinion? But that's some of the stuff that just was jumping out to me as I started to run through the formations. And, yeah, and right lines. away, I mean, you don't, with all of his talk of, you know, Wiley and McFadden, right? And Gutman and Lennon are back, right? Sosa is now starting, right? Um, you know, Sadic shows up again, and now he's playing. You know, for a while he plays Wiley out as a yeah. as a left midfielder in front of him, right? I mean, the number of combinations, right? And Parata was at a right back before Parata goes to a center back, right? Abara comes back after being Josette with him for a while, yeah. right? And you're like, um, it's a different whether we're you know. It's a different formation each time, and it's a different um, set of players each time. And and he blames this on all the injuries. Injuries, at this point. always in the press conference. This is what he said. It's, right. He's like constant changing. And like no, like this was the problem. Like, look, I ha- I had empathy for you three slides ago or yeah. two slides ago, even right. But you got to sort it out fast, and you got to stick with what a good coach should be able to identify as the problems and then build the confidence of a striker who clearly still has it. If we go to a guy who has the goal of the year at the end here, but um, if, if we go forward here, right, you know, I find it uh, in- interesting, right? So Joseph starts and scores um, and never starts again all season, Dave. How many more games do we have left at this point, Carmen? Jump. So we have, one, two, three, just go ahead and jump four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Doesn't start for the remaining nine games of the season. So yeah, jump back to to there. Okay, so and then Cisneros has started fifteen of the last sixteen games with only three goals. Right? Moreno is totally dropped out of favor at this point with Pineda. Um Tessa Barra and ultimately ultimately commits to Amar Sadik. At this point, you see a complete commitment to a Marsadic over Moreno. I mean, yeah. we talked about that on the podcast, but like when you look at this, like it really jumps out, out at you. Um, and, and, you know, at this point, this is when I think you and I really were losing uh, the the plot with Pineda on what he was doing to even give this team a yeah, we bloody couldn't, chance to make the playoffs. We couldn't stop people from scoring, even though he had adequately, re- they had adequately replaced Robinson with Parata, right? And we still always had the entire time we had George Campbell. So we had two of our center backs, right? Gutman and Lennon are back. And Hernandez was back at this point too, just yep. sitting on the bench, right? So And Sosa was playing all the time, right? So the defense shouldn't have been giving up that many goals. And throughout the entire time, you know, even when Martinez went down, right, you had three out of the four mama. And yeah. then as soon as Martinez shows back up, you had all four of the mama, and, and we still couldn't score. And do you remember the Hernandez injury uh, time frame? Was he out for a huge part of the season? No, it wasn't that long. He because, was sitting on the bench. So it's clear that he finally figured it out at the end of the season that Hernandez is a really good defender right back, which – you and I said that from the beginning of the season, that's who we wanted to see as our right back is Ronald Hernandez. This guy just is slow. He's slow. And maybe you should have asked some people that knew uh, who the best damn players are, right? Yeah. Gutman, like we quick, quickly agree. Excellent left back, good defender. Ronald Hernandez, good right back defender. Yeah. I, I like you don't start McFadden, right? If you've got Hernandez, that's for sure. I don't know if in that stretch we had Hernandez, but yeah, I, Hernandez is back. We sure sitting as, on the bench. Sure yeah. as hell should have had him in over McFadden, some kid. We got a Venezuelan, you know, starter for the national team. What? Well, he, he had Lennon there? in. He had Lennon in at this point. Lennon's, Why? Lennon's back, right? And he has Lennon in. Um, <sighs> it's it's all backwards, man. Uh, yeah, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's keep going, Carmen. All right. So now we've got Cisneros, who has started 19 of 20 games. Um, but since his hat trick, he's only had four goals. Um, look, that's a recipe for a lot of frustration. Yeah, you can see in this first game, the 2-1 loss, right? That on yeah. the, If you scroll down to the bench, Ronald Hernandez is on the bench here, right? Yeah. So you can see. I mean, puts Dom Dwyer in. You know, again, you've got Moreno on the bench, man. 
and it's just like, why did you put all this trust in Cisneros and not for trust a team that's not scoring goals for a team exactly. that's not scoring goals? Yeah. And you have all this money in Joseph Martinez over four million dollars a year. Moreno, who you know he started off as a designated player, I don't think he is anymore, but like I feel like he still is in that caliber. Yeah, like he's how is he not starting? And you're just putting all this trust in this Cisneros guy. Well, he keeps saying that, you know, just like I said in that press conference, right, that it's all about the balance and you can't accommodate both Almada and Moreno and the same thing. And all it says is that it's not that you can't accommodate, it's that he can't figure out how to accommodate, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and how to, you That's know. That's a great point. And, <laughs> right. and so then, like, you're going to start Dom Dwyer, okay? Right. And all these people are like, well, Joseph Martinez does can't play 90 minutes anymore. Oh, well, Dom Dwyer can. Yeah. Like, we talked about that from the, the yeah. get-go, right? Like, fine, you proved me wrong, Dave. He can come in and sub and, and actually <laughs> score, okay? Yeah. Uh, you were right. And but then I said, as a, a starter, he'll never score. As, and he a start, as, a, you said as soon if, as he was starting, he never scored. Yeah, so why would you do because that? Because he's, you know, you're, and you're like, okay, well, he's playing more minutes as a starter. How could he not score when he was scoring off the bench? And the reason is Dom Dwyer at his age is still physical and fast against a tired back four. Yeah. He is not physical and fast against a starting team. And so he is totally ineffective against a starting team. He's effective coming off the bench because everybody's a little bit tired and he can still use his physicality. Yeah. Right. So it's just not appreciating yeah. why he's succeeding. And by the way, for people saying that, oh, well, that's why Joseph is successful to know because Joseph never plays that aggressive style. Yes, no. he's a poacher. He's mm -hmm. got composure. Right. He knows where to be at the right time if you have. A and he system. scored goals while he was starting. Not yeah. not tons, but the team wasn't scoring a lot. Yeah. And he scored about consistently off the bench as he was yeah. starting. Right. Um, yeah. Can somebody remind me what is Pineda? telling us about the decision with joseph like why is he not start? does he tell us anything no no one, any of this no and even towards the end of the, nothing the press conference before the last game of the season which we'll get to he's still playing coy with <sighs> well, are you, are you going to start joseph martinez i don't know we'll see game time decision. he says it's tactical right right he yeah. says there's nothing says it's against tactical. joseph joseph's a good enough you know player but i've made this this tough decision to have the balanced team and joseph is not in that right and i think it's because you know, he thinks that he's still trying to coach us as a pressing team. We never pressed all year with Joseph, without Joseph, right. with Dom Dwyer. We yeah. never turned the ball over for people up the field at all. No. Right? Um, I know they talk statistically. <coughs> he gives these BS statistics that we – that, that, that um, you know, technically we turned the ball over and we were in their box a lot, right? But it just doesn't pass the smell test. If you watch game after game after game, there were no times when we actually, they were trying to play out of the back and we actually intercepted and recycled. It just yeah. didn't happen, right? So, I mean, we talked about it all the time because the few times that we ever saw it, right, we highlighted it because yeah. it basically led to a goal every time, right? I mean, and so, you know, sometimes the statistics can be misleading, yeah. right? You know, people always talk, we talked all season about how Lennon was, you know, the, one of the top creators, uh, you know, in the whole league, right? So because he had all these dangerous crosses. You know, meanwhile, how many of those crosses led to a goal? One. One right yeah. so and then you're like well that's not his fault and you're like yes it is i mean it's the team's fault right because you can't have a guy swinging in crosses when there's nobody in the box yeah right that just doesn't make sense it's just a disconnect you have a players two players who are incompatible i mean he's talking about incompatibility but that's a real incompatibility yeah. right there's no real incompatibility with moreno and almada you just have to figure yeah. it out so he stopped he'd stop trusting joseph obviously in this last stretch to give him the start moreno and moreno gone <laughs> yet he's leaning in on cisneros and a, a marcetic let's just call and dom dwyer and dom dwyer and that is a recipe in the t after the timbers game for joseph martinez to rightfully flip a table of aros wow. Campoyo. if you take any other coach in the league and you ask them you say okay let's you look at atlanta united and you tell me you can have Moreno, Martinez, Dwyer, or Cisneros. Who are they going to pick? 
I mean, it's as simple as that. Dave. It really <laughs> is. Like any, like you think Curtin could the coach of the year could figure this one out? I think he could. I bet he could. Right. He'd be yeah. like, look, we'll figure out the relationship side thing. Maybe I should talk to Joseph. And in fairness, if you're a coach like that, you say, all right, well, here's the problem, right? Because Dwyer and Cisneros can so-called press, right? Whereas Martinez is, you know, a little bit older and doesn't really press. And yeah. Moreno is inconsistent or press, right? So you say, look, if you're going to press, you need those guys. But the bottom line is, if you have those guys, play the better guys and don't press. Yeah. Right. You know, you need a system that actually suits your players. If you have Messi on the field and you say that Messi can't press, are you going to bench him? Yeah. Right. Or are you going to say, let's do something else where Messi can be on the yeah. field? And and meanwhile, right? yeah. and meanwhile, yeah. we've got Almada who's just cooking at this point. Yeah. In terms of all classes, the reason he was the MLS newcomer of the year. Yes. <laughs> the only nice thing, but, um, yes. you know, and, and that was very much because the players and the clubs recognize like this dude is just talented, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but how many times did we see Almada when he was finally cooking slip a ball to Cisneros or Dwyer who were not on the same page or couldn't finish or whatever? Right. Right. And the problem is Almada is built to do that, you know, running and slipping. He makes great decisions. He slips the ball beautifully, yeah. right? And the guys who we slip into the ball with are not not moving off the ball. They're not running and because they're just waiting to press. That's yeah. what we do. We're athletic. We press, right? But they don't have good movement off the ball, whereas Moreno does, Martinez does. Like, and, come on. And, like, especially this, this point of the season, right, where we've had a shitty season, you can still make a push to the MLS Cup because of the weird system that we have. That's just a playoff system, right? Right. So right now we've got everybody. We've got Mama, right? Right. Uh, Moreno, Araujo, Martinez, and Almada. You've got Lennon back, who can now, in my mind, just be a right back um, option behind Ronald Hernandez as fullback. As long as you tell Lennon, if you go in, you're going to play fullback. You're not going to play attacking winger, mm. right? Ronald Hernandez is the starter. Sorry, Lennon, you're a great player. We're going to put you back there. Moreno is going to be in front as a forward, right? Right. Um, you know, and. It's, yeah, to me, like it was all there with the, the chess pieces toward this last uh, several games of the season for us to, to make, make that comeback that never happened, particularly. Yeah. yeah, so then we go to the next slide. So Sadich appears again, yeah. Say and suddenly Ibarra disappears. Yep. And right? Even though he wasn't hurt, Josetu came back and just sat the – he was injured for a little bit, but yep. he's back at this point. He's just sitting the bench, right? And so, again, you know, is it – the injuries or is it he just couldn't figure out what to do right because even when they came back and they're no longer injured he's still switching it up and has you know no idea it's a switch every time yeah. and you get into this last four games and now suddenly lennon who was starting over hernandez at right back is now pushed up on the wing and hernandez is back right although he doesn't even stick with that in the end he switches that in the last two games you're like and so after that Flipping of the rice, right? We didn't see Joseph start um, for even before that. Um, and we didn't all the way to the very last game of the season, <laughs> even after, you know, he had one of the most remarkable goals. Um, and, you know, you don't start him against, the, the, against the home crowd for the last game of the season that, look, I think Joseph's going to be here next year which is also tragic because Moreno and he obviously have a broken relationship. I don't know how we're going to export them. Pineda, you mean? Uh, Pineda. Moreno's going to be here too. Pineda, Pineda's going to be here too, but I also uh, think Joseph is as well. You um, do? Okay. You don't score a goal like that, Dave, unless you still got it, okay? Uh -huh. uh, you don't. Yeah. You don't score a goal like that unless you still got it. And like I said, he bet on Cisneros and and um, uh, a Marcetic, and he bet on Rios for some like weird reasons, and yet he's now got this battle. It's like he watched all or nothing Arsenal too much, and Aubameyang being exiled from Arsenal because uh, Mikel Arteta is actually a good coach and hey. and knows when you've got to show who's boss or ten. Uh, um, uh, who's the new Man U coach? Ten Hag, Ten Hag uh, you know, shows Ronaldo who's boss, yeah. right? No. Like, I feel like 
Pineda was trying to do that with Joseph in some way and miserably failed because he was wrong. Yep. I mean, but you look at those decisions that those guys make, like Ten Hag, you know, our Manchester United, Carmen and I are a Manchester United fan, so maybe mm-hmm. you can correct me if I'm wrong, Carmen. But, um, you know, um, Cristiano Ronaldo, some people might, you know, compare and say, all right, well, Joseph Martinez is like Cristiano Ronaldo. He was really, really great. He's a club legend, but maybe he's lost a step. He doesn't press. He doesn't fit the system, right? But here's the thing. So first of all, <laughs> Ten Hag completely changed his system to fit this players. They're much more counterattack. They're aggressive, whatever. And But the thing that's so different, right, if you're Ten Hag, Right, you have Sancho and you have Rashford and you have Alanga, right? Anthony and you have Anthony, right? And so you're not benching Cristiano Ronaldo for Cisneros and Dwyer level, right? Right. (laughs) So you can afford to make that critical decision because, to be honest with you, those guys are better players than than Ronaldo is right now for this team or whatever, right? And, um, you know, but I just don't see that with, with Martinez, that the level of difference is so big. And Martinez is not... I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo's 39, right? Joseph Martinez is 29. (laughs) Right. I I know he's coming off an ACL, but he's not done. Well, that's the whole point of the presentation. He never, after that recovery, after his procedure, ever gave him a consistent chance, not only with himself starting, but also a lineup behind him that was designed to run through Al- not only him because the team isn't doesn't even have to be Joseph Martinez anymore at this point in the season Dave it's Almada it's Moreno Ujo, and Martinez it's Mama that it always should have been was totally available it's killing me that we didn't see him play our talent our strength Dave which was those top four yep and the other thing just that I- don't get it wrong in the back. The other thing that I think that happened, so one thing, you know, when he sort of first benched Martinez after he came back, he scored one goal in three games, and then he sort of moved into the bench, right? That lit a fire under Martinez, clearly. You could see it after he got benched, his first substitute appearance he had a little bit more burst to him, apparently. Yep. He was trying to prove to Pineda that he could go 90 minutes. He was doing two-a-day practices, yep. right? And Pineda, instead of saying, okay, I sent the message, he got it, and now he's back, and put him right back in the lineup, he held the grudge and is like, no, Martinez is you know, done or whatever. And then he couldn't see, even though he was putting him in last 20 minutes and he was scoring almost every time, yep. right? He <laughs> was like, okay, that means he's ready. He, you know, I... I I'm okay or even good with Pineda making a key call to say, look, you know, you're kind of going through the motions. Maybe you're a little bit out of shape. Like you're not quite whatever. He sent the message. The message worked. And then instead of seeing it, he just, he held the grudge and blew it. Yeah. Boy, he held the grudge. Yeah. And then it's not even like, I think you can kind of tell maybe this is just me guessing, but Moreno seems like kind of a, maybe a passive person in <laughs> yes. his personality. I, I, I would bet. Yeah. And, and so I wish he had a little Martinez in him because boy, Mara- or Pineda treated him wrong towards the end of the season. Yes, he did. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's incredible that, um, you know, and, and it's, it's just, he benched him when he was the leading scorer on the team. Yeah. And you're like, okay, why? Yeah. What for? I know. And then that awful explanation he gave for yes. sitting him. Just, oh, so But he's incompatible with Almada. I mean, two guys who can pass the ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see it, actually, the last, um, the last two games, certainly the last game. I mean, he finally, I think it's in the last game that he brings Moreno off the bench for the last 30 minutes. And, I mean, he was dominating the game, yeah. right? And he was spraying the ball around. He's moving or whatever. And, again, you know, I do think that Moreno, at one point, he had played all those minutes in a row. And I think he was a little tired. Maybe he yeah. went through a little lull in his form, right? And it was fine. You know, first of all, he should have been rotated a little bit, you know. Right. And He's it's fine crazy. to take a guy and say, look, 
you're going to put you on the bench for a game just to reset you a little bit or whatever, but you still have to recognize that he's talented and mm -hmm. he's whatever, and then put him back, right? You don't just send him out to Siberia, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. And all over the place. All over the place. I mean, absolutely all over the place. His He clearly, you know, the his opinions of the players had such wild swings right and that is not on the injuries that is when people were available he still had no idea who he thought was the best team and what was the strategy that his team was going to employ and what was the formation and it's just flailing but again like average joe should know like you said moreno is more talented than and Marcetic, right? Right. Joseph right. Martinez is more talented than Cisneros, right? Like all day long. Right. Like any coach is going to say that, right? So yep. when you have a moment to create consistency, you do that. Oh, and by the way, you know, Rios Novos at 5'10", when you had Gudinho during that stretch too, also very important. So these are like the simple mistakes that just... Kept. Yeah, honestly, with all the crap that he pulled all season, if he had simply inserted Godinho into the lineup the moment he was ready, we make the playoffs. Yeah.